on. Hit the button. It's going to be a confirmation. There we go. Jim, are you rolling? OK, this is the Enfield Planning Board. It is Wednesday, April 27th, 2022, 7 o'clock. We are in the DPW conference room and also on Zoom. We have nobody signed in yet on Zoom. So I'm calling the meeting to order. I'm David Fract. I'm the chair and members from my right this time. Phil Romare. Eric Russell. Craig Carhart. Jim Bonner. Okay. Uh, Jim, I'm going to elevate you to a uh, full member status in case we have to vote on anything. We do have a quorum. Uh, first order of business is comments from the public. Uh, I will introduce our public member, who is Tim Jennings, who has been appointed as a full member or an alternate, Jim? Full member. Full member. That's what I thought. Yeah. And as soon as we get past town meeting on Saturday, Tim will join us at the table, replacing. I think he's actually Kurt. replacing Kurt. Going stepping well, down to an alternate you're position. Going to alternate. Alternate. Dan's going to be an alternate, I believe. Did you say Dan's going to be an alternate? I thought that's what he said. Geez, I, hope I, I might be wrong, um, but I hadn't heard that. OK, now I was. Maybe because it was talking to me about being also been traveling and he's traveling, so maybe I'm confusing the two. Possibly. <laughs> Anyhow, yeah. uh, people who are not here. Um, Kate is ill. Linda is in Florida and Dan is in New Mexico, so none of them are able to zoom in, I guess. Uh, Kate did provide a select board report. And let me see if I can find it. David, are there any other new appointees? Not yet. You are it. As far as I know. OK, so. Kate says of the select board, uh, we met Monday, April 18. First order of business was a public hearing on Article 17 to increase the select board to five members. The public hearing is a statutory requirement that must be completed before the business portion of town meeting. There was good discussion on thoughts. I shared that I am in favor of this article and I'm happy to answer any questions the planning board team members may have ahead of town meeting. Town meeting. This is Saturday beginning at 9 o'clock at Hughes Park. Dress for the weather and season. Bring your own comfy chairs. My understanding is that the lionesses will have an offering of refreshments. Please remind other Enfield voters to join us. There are a number of articles on the ballot that will shape the future of Enfield. There was a discussion on how ARPA, ARPA, which is the American Rescue Plan something, funds may be allocated, and it was agreed that the town manager's office should pursue investigating it to ensure the purchase of land could be covered. There were a few hus housekeeping items, including the signing of the agreement with the Mascoma Sailing Club required to comply with a grant funding agreement, no material change to the current Lakeside Park operations. An initial conversation to address a smoking concern on town property and board and committee memberships and appointments. Appointments take place after town meeting and there will be a new list of vacancies circulated. It's the intent of the town manager's office to make publicizing the list of vacancies a regular practice to encourage involvement and welcome new volunteers. So that is the 
select board report. And I believe it's the end of I guess the next order of business is minutes of March 23rd. It's a long one. I hope everybody has had an opportunity to look through it and make any uh, notes uh, on corrections or comments. Just so, as an FYI for you guys, uh, Whitney, our minutes taker, you know, has just had her baby a couple weeks back. She did join us for uh, Master Planning Task Force a couple of nights ago, and uh, she does owe us a set from the first meeting of April, but uh, she's obviously getting access to all of our meetings through our recordings and uh, is outputting them. She stayed pretty current on most of the boards and uh, Obviously, she still owes us one set here in this board. I gave her prior priority or preference to output the uh, minutes for the ZBA because we had formal hearings. And I wanted to have those ready for the five day deadline. So. Obviously, we're giving her uh, as much understanding as we can. She's been doing such a great job. <clears throat> and she's getting things caught up. She did say that she had a, a cold run through all the members of her family, so including the little baby. So I know she's had her hands full. But she is now, she does planning, zoning, master planning task force, and conservation commission. So she's been kind of our rock star late of late. So if you have any changes, we'll get them on the recording so that she can make those changes. Looks to me like they're very complete. And it's almost a transcript. It is. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Just amazing. <clears throat> and I, I did not see anything that was I can off base. No, I can, you know, not a problem with uh, the minutes she's been taking. I mean, it's um, I think it, it really does help that we have the recordings too to <clears throat> yeah, her in, yeah, yeah, at her um, leisure, pause and play and go back. And oh, oh wait, yeah. if you want a, a a decent set of minutes, that's makes it a lot easier. Yep. Um, but it's still still it's her um uh, what I want to use. She's just um, she's yeah she's skilled. Yeah but it's also her her willingness to put in the details yep. as opposed to just skip over stuff. Yep. So I make a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Uh, motion made. Do I hear a second? No second. Made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Raise your hand. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Let the record show that there were four people voting to accept and Eric abstained. Uh, there are no hearings. There are no conceptuals. Update on master plan. Um, I had hoped that I would be able to tell the planning board at this meeting that we had a nice, reasonably polished draft that we could make available to the public at or shortly after town meeting. Uh, unfortunately, the best laid plans of Mice men and master planning task forces don't always work out as we had planned it. Um, I think we are moving in the right direction. We have <clears throat> a lot of 
a lot of comments that were made by the focus groups, by this board at our previous meeting, and just a lot of general edits, um, a lot of photo edits that need to be done. Uh, it's clear that we have to look through available photo libraries and are probably going to have to send somebody out with a camera to take some photos that are missing. So at town meeting on Saturday, I'm going to give a very short update on what we've done over the last year. I'm going to talk about the public involvement, um, the surveys on the website, question of the week, the townwide survey, the farmer's market, the educational center, uh, not centers, educational forums that we had over at the Shaker Museum, and the uh, feedback forums that we had here uh, last month or the month before. And where we go from here is Randy, our consultant, is going to be assembling everything um uh, getting everything nice and pretty locked down and have what is essentially will be a final draft and we will make that available to the public uh, probably sometime in late june or july with the idea of having a town-wide forum or workshop to um, let people <clears throat> give us their final feedback. Uh, we think we've got it right from all of the um, public interactions that we've had, but before we have a officially warned public hearing, we wanna give the townspeople one final chance to weigh in on the entire five chapters. So we'll do that. Hopefully there will be a minimal amount of changes or objections. Uh, we understand that some people are going to object to some things, but uh, you can't satisfy everybody. And that, that will be made clear to the people in attendance. After that, we will go to the public hearing process and the planning board, whoever's on it, in probably in the fall, will hopefully vote to adopt the master plan. And then we'll go on to do probably four or five more chapters. So that is where we are on master planning task force. Any questions or comments? Sure. Um. A couple of questions, but one on what you we talked about, and that was as you mentioned at the um, master planning meeting you just had. So you just, the uh, public forum prior to the final adoption here on one is that going to be? How, how are you thinking of having that structured? Do you want to do that as a one of the planning board Wednesday meetings format, and that's what we discuss, and then. And, and the conceptuals that might be floating around, or as a Monday, Tuesday night meeting just dedicated to. I, um, I, I think that's going to be a standalone meeting. It won't necessarily, I, I think probably it's going to be a master planning task force meeting rather than a planning board meeting, although I'm certainly open to discussion on that. And we probably will talk about that both in the task force and the planning board once our, you know, once our memberships get straightened out. I think it should be joint. I think it should be posted as a joint meeting. It could be. Um, and I'm expecting that we will have more people than this room can comfortably handle. And, you know, we haven't discussed a date or a time yet other than to say late July, early August. We hope to be able to get as many of the seasonal residents as possible involved. 
And my guess is that it will be held probably on a Saturday morning or a Saturday afternoon so we can get as many folks as possible. But again, you know, I'm, I'm getting some of my own personal feelings in terms of the timing and the format, and that's all to be determined. So that's it on master plan. Um, old business, we have none. New business, um, as I said, Tim is our incoming member. And if, Tim, if I'm not putting you on the spot, would you care to give us a little bit of your history uh, in terms of your, your time in the town and your involvement? in town functions and that kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. Come on up and, uh, you know, we, we know you spent some Saturday mornings bottling beer in your previous well, life, but uh, yeah. I, I suspect you've done a little bit more than that. <laughs> yeah, well, I um, moved to town here in 88. And um, uh, it's, I think this, that year or the next, I, I took the job as uh, running the water and wastewater system here in town. And that job evolved as the town's public works facilities got a little more complicated till I was appointed public works director. So I don't remember when, but at some point. So I was with the town for 10 years and then moved to uh, Cardigan Mountain School where I've been the director of facilities there for uh, 25 years this this uh, summer and I uh, well let's see I, I actually kind of purposely didn't get involved much in the town after I left employment there this kind of felt a little awkward but um, ended up volunteering for various other things most significant of which is probably the last six years I was involved in um, building of the Mescomian Community Health Center. I was the project manager for the construction, volunteered to do that. And then got appointed to the board and was on that board until um, a year ago, I think a year ago, maybe two years ago. So helped them get off the ground. And uh, then I just, uh, got interested in housing. I've, I've always been involved in construction, that sort of thing. And then as, as I'm thinking about approaching retirement age, you know, what options are out there and seeing very little, uh, wondered what, uh, what you know, I might be able to get involved in. Certainly I've complained or I hope I can give you too much criticism here, but <laughs> I figure if I do that, you know, I, 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 the only way to make that worthwhile is to is actually get involved. And so I volunteered to do that, and I look forward to working with you guys. Um, I think the what I seem to see is that in having participated in two of the workshops or the, or the uh, well, focus groups on the uh, master plan, and having read the drafts to that point, it does seem to be different uh, flavor, I guess, to the master plan and than, than what it used to be and how it may relate to the zone, the present zoning ordinance. So I, I think that's going to be a quite a challenge to Find the find the the, the, the sweet spot for for Enfield. Yeah. And you know that planning board drafts the zoning ordinance, so I hope you're up for the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's what we're here for. You know? Well, great. Um, I can't officially say welcome aboard because we're not past town meeting, but welcome yeah. aboard and I'm looking forward to working with you. Can I throw something out to the we board? Sure can. I, I've, uh, since we had a light night tonight, um, is there any recent history of anybody building a dam in Enfield? Yes. <clears throat> the 
not a new one, but the dam on Smith Pond was replaced or at least repaired to the level that it was essentially a replacement. Do you yeah. remember when it was within the last 15 years? Yeah, 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 so it's somewhere in that range. Yeah, yeah. I mean, recently enough to yeah. be considered yeah. new. Yeah, because I, I've got this little intermittent stream running through my farm, and I, I like it, you know. It's, it's really easy to put like a six foot dam in there and get, get myself a little pool, a little pond that I can use to irrigate in my farm when we get dry conditions in the no hydro in the summer. And I might stick some hydropower in it too to run the pumps to pump the drip irrigation system. Yeah. But I don't I, I don't know what, you know, I read a little bit about it, you know, as long as it doesn't get, as long as it doesn't exceed six feet high. Uh, there's not a lot of regulations. Yeah, I was going to say, I have no clue what the cutoff would be for a yeah. backyard pool versus a DES regulated pond. Yeah, and actually it's it's in a wetlands area, so I'd be making the wetlands wetter, you know. <laughs> but I would think it's got to be a DES regulation, right? Probably. Yeah, there's a whole damn bureau in DES. Okay. So I would start there. Threw it out there if you guys had, you know, yeah. ever... Had yeah. somebody build a dam here in recent history. You should talk to uh, Jim too, because okay. like we actually you know, we're regulated on a few of our dams. So we've got some dams that mm -hmm. I think the George Pond yeah. collection is. Yeah. is well, a, this stream, this yeah. stream, you know, it runs good in the spring, but then you know, if we if we don't get a lot of rain in the summer, it dries up about middle of July. Yeah, mm -hmm. just when you need the water, yeah. your garden and and uh, a vegetable plot out there. So I thought maybe I'd just create a little pool of water and then I could pump the water out of there. Yeah. But it's either that or I got to run a line from Lily Pond, which I own yeah. a chunk of that, according to I pay a property tax on it anyway. Yes. Five cents every every half year. Five <laughs> cents a nickel. I get a full bill for five cents. <laughs> right. so I, I just put a nickel on it. And, Gosh, tape it to it. And bring it to the awesome. But uh, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that yeah. out there if anybody yeah. knew anything. Yeah, just call it a fire pond. Call it what? A fire pond. Yeah, could be. Yeah. yeah. I'll do some more research on it. Yeah, I'm happy to help anyway. Yeah. I can. Uh, speaking of dams, I don't know if you guys are aware of this. You might be. Uh, the state of New Hampshire has determined that the Goose Pond Dam as a fatal flaw there's an artesian uh, spring underneath it and it needs to be replaced and so word from i have some friends that have property on goose pond is that they're going to drain that that pond and it will be empty for at least a couple of years mm -hmm. wow. and uh, it's a very major construction project because it's huge those of you that have been up there probably have seen how big that dam is it's a very big dam they drain that Two years ago, for an inspection, and yeah. that's probably what they discovered. Yeah, it's good at that point. Yeah, the fatal flaw is that this the artesian spring coming up underneath it was likely that it could actually work its way out. And uh, DES, I think, has determined that there's inundation threat to 400 homes below oh, yeah. the dam, Everything which makes it a very large impact mm -hmm. zone. And so. Uh, I have I have some friends that have places on on Goose Pond and not very happy. They'll be paying taxes on beautiful lakefront. That's not going to be a lakefront for <laughs> for quite a while. And I guess even after they completely repaired it and rebuilt the dam, it's going to take like a year to fill back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's going to be very disruptive. When is that work scheduled to commence? I think yeah. they're starting in on it this summer. Yeah. Great. Are they draining again? Yeah. You remember. Uh, Grafton Pond a year or so ago, they drained that sucker and did some work on oh, that dam. Oh, I'm confusing the two. That's the one I was thinking of. Grafton okay. Pond they drained. Goose, oh, Goose Pond and Canaan. Goose Pond yeah. and Canaan. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. That's yeah, that's even bigger. Yes, that's a lot bigger. Yes. Yep. So that'll be interesting to see what the impacts are on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else have anything they want to? Bring up, up Eric. Just say, as well as everyone here knows, I'm moving up to select board next week. So this will be my last meeting as a member of this board. Um, so I want to say thank you to everyone here. It's been a great experience being on the planning board and 
learned a lot about planning in the town and really enjoyed the time here and appreciate the work everyone does. So thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for your time and effort and we look forward to working with you as a selectman. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to be very well suited and going to do a really great job for the town. So I'm looking Good forward luck. to it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. I am. Kurt? A couple of just on, on the master plan itself, actually. One um, that I brought up at the master plan task force the other couple of days ago and just want to just run it by the board here yeah, since we have the final say in the matter is the the future land use map, the um, the exit, I think it's the number 15, the Smith Ponds exits. Currently it's showing future commercial, industrial, slash industrial and del development going a significant distance up Smith Pond Road. And I think that's something that should be looked at and reconsidered. I think it's just excessive for that physical area of town. The road itself is more the issue. The road and the topography next to Smith Pond Road, I feel cannot handle industrial um, construction or traffic. So just currently it shows it on the map and I just think that should be reconsidered how much area it's showing. And the other question is I brought up and I did some more research on it is the I had some concerns regarding some of the land that was labeled as conservation land on the maps, uh, the dark green shades. And turns out she, I don't know where she got her, where she got her uh, sources, but they were correct. Um, there was a couple of easement properties I was not aware of um, that she had listed. But there is one that I think it's more for this board to decide how they want to handle and really bump it to the select board how they want to do it on that uh, rectangular squarish area on Methodist Hill Road that's green um, it's actually turns out the town acquired it a year or two ago I'm assuming for taxes because there's no other reason why the town would get this land um, I'm not aware I'm buying this land but I'm not aware of exactly yeah, it's, 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 it's when you look on the uh, yeah. future land use or some of the other maps, yeah, so. it's on as you're going, come off the interstate, you start hanging it up. Mm -hmm. Is it still? Yeah. The way? yeah, and I go uh, before about halfway up is this, and it's near where the class six roads are located. Now, I don't know if it's exact. Parcel yeah, and it's like a hundred acres. Yeah, it's like about, and then we'll, we'll look at the tax data, GIS data, and and I think it was like a hundred acres. And it looked like, and it said Just town, it. town acquired it. Um, Current land use? So, no, future. Future land use. use. Go up. 50, it might be under the right current there. one, too, but it shows 50, up better on the, the future because it's less busy map. Methodist Hill, scroll over. Yeah, that block there. Yeah. That belongs to town and field. Yeah. That's a big piece of property. Yeah, I think it's, I think I, where I crawl off the top of my head, like 100 acres or something. And it was just like last year they acquired it. For uh, tax. That, that's all, it's, it doesn't say why. The tax guy just says town of Enfield 2021 or something. Hmm. Well, and, like say, that's a select board. To, to right, try. right, but it's being shown as conserved property. He's, yeah, he's, he's correct though. From a this map standpoint, if it's not officially conserved, we probably shouldn't it should show it be. that way. It should be just yeah. part of the residential. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At this yeah. point, right? Because I can't see what the. I mean, it'd be nice if the town conserved it, but they would probably I mean, just turn around and sell it. Well, I will pass. Well, unless the prior owner actually sold the development rights, which is technically yeah. possible. Possible. I didn't go that far. Uh, yeah, but, uh, my guess is it's it's showing up there because it's town ownership. Yeah, and she's she's getting all that data from our um, assessing data. So yeah, yeah, yeah it's a hundred acres. I'm looking at the tax credit. Yeah, I'll pass that on to Brandy. Yeah. Um, I it was my sense that you know she was gonna cut down that 
uh, purple area. Yeah, you can see it there. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I think there was general agreement that you know that was it's excessive certainly... for for what the road could handle. So yeah. I'm, I'm sure in the next iteration that's going to be reduced mm -hmm. considerably. And there's certainly uh, some of that land that is already commercial industrial. That's yeah, the very the very chippers. Yeah, you got uh, chippers and, golf course uh, and the golf this course. Uh, Matt Niddle MK. Right. He bought. Enfield Lane Co. He's got a wood shop. Isn't there, yeah. a, isn't there a uh, dog boarding? There's a dog kennel. As well, dog did, kennel. Did he actually do that? The, the dog, dog kennel? kennel? Dog that, kennel's been there. It's yep. been, it is. Okay, I didn't know. I don't it's think it's in use right now. But it's built. But it's built. Okay. And it's and it's a use that's, unless they put it to some other use, somebody could take it over tomorrow and reopen it. Yeah, but that's not an industrial Right. I mean, that's more of a home business. That was sold as a home business. Which it is. Yeah. 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 But we we did do a, uh, a site plan review and we approved the kennel. Right, right. But it's not like the purple industrial. I yeah. Would, I would actually recommend that she obviously trims the purple on that side of the highway to reflect just those businesses down at the bottom of Smith Farm yeah, Road. Yeah, because the topography wise, that's right. But she should also pick up, there's a little bit of commercial industrial on the other side of the highway. Because there's that trucking firm oh, there. Yes. Yeah. And then we we approved the planning board. You guys approved, uh, there's a motorcycle repair shop. Yeah. Right. Where that igloo-shaped house is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we also, you guys approved a site plan for a 10,000 square foot. Uh, it was Mason Racing years ago. And uh, Bobby Oaks has purchased that. And he's got that. Uh, as a potential uh, member, he, he came in for an exceptional mm -hmm. one, guys. Talk about maybe splitting it into two 5,000 square foot yeah. warehouses or yep. something. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Which are, yeah. again, on the, as you're looking at it here, would be the western side of the highway yeah. or the southern side of the right. highway. There's all group 10 that you can yep. access. Yep. And to me, it would be a lot would be determined by the, the uh, topography. Yeah. Because at some point, it starts getting steep. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, well, we really want to be telling somebody it's okay to cut into the bank to yeah. build a warehouse. Yeah. Yeah, and there's the uh, Humane Society. Yeah. Is down at the end of the old mm -hmm. uh, tent. Okay, so I will pass that on, and that'll that'll save her a bunch of time, I think, in terms of researching all those blocks of land yeah. and whether they're correct or not. So yeah. I mean, thanks for passing that on. And uh, anything else, anybody? <clears throat> so three questions, Jim? just general nature. Um, is there a sort of planning board 101 webinar or something that? Yes, I can share that with you. There's actually a, up, a seminar coming right up uh, that you can attend. It's a virtual because there's still state is still very COVID sensitive. It's a virtual seminar. Uh, the good part about that is that they're going to record it. And so it'll be made available for you to use and, and consume at your leisure. So you could take it in one hour or half hour increments. Perfect. As opposed to sitting for, because I think the, uh, the seminars are two half days, like nine to noon on Saturdays coming up. But those are good. And, and I do, I'll, I'll get you some books. And I'd be happy to also sit with you and, and uh, uh, you know, obviously uh, lots of experience and um, I would love to give you any help and feedback and support that, that I can offer. Great. Thank and the um, planning, the state planning listserv plan link yep. is just an open forum. People post stuff. Um, and then the state's. OE, is it OEP, OPE, OA? OES? Yeah, something like that. They keep changing, they change the name. Come yes, it's an alphabet uh, soup. OEP. <laughs> but they, they get them a link to that because yeah. there's the info page that they have that's really helpful for doing research and just learning, you know, okay. 101 stuff. Yeah, I'll get you some resources. I definitely, okay. we have some available. Um, Municipal Association offers some neat stuff yeah. for sort of knowing the territory. And then do you have the those uh, booklets, uh, Planning 101? I do. Some of the up recent ones. 
Yep. On the Municipal Association, I think they call. Yep, and it should be. They offer some pretty cool stuff for you, Eric, too, uh, for as your new selectman, you'll probably appreciate. Yeah. I did a couple of those when I first became selectman, and yeah. I really appreciated that. It's particularly a challenge for a three-member board, mm -hmm. because if you run into one of the other selectmen on the street, right. you can't talk about it. You can't talk shop at all, because <laughs> it's an Ill illegal meeting right there. So we start talking wow. about that, because that's a quorum, the two yeah. of you. <laughs> well, there's an mm -hmm. article on Saturday to potentially address that. To, to put it up to five. Yeah. 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 How much more are they going to cost us? <laughs> well, the, it, uh, what's, what's the select? Let's see. I think the select board stipend is 3000 a year. I think that's right. Yeah. However, yeah. that's a stipend that is, you know, not, it's not a salary or anything. It's, it's sort of at the discretion of the budget committee of the town whether to include a stipend for the. Mm -hmm for the select board and there's been discussion in the past about reducing or eliminating or, or whether that should be considered uh, mm -hmm. but it, but as in the current state it would be six thousand dollars a year yep. sure the budget can we'll keep it at six we'll no. go to five but keep it at six <laughs> well, it was six thousand total three thousand <laughs> no well right now it's nine thousand but i mean that'd be yeah, yeah. Oh, okay nobody's doing it for the money <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> no. for sure. Okay, anything else? The other thing I had the day was, was once we get asked, get the master plan out there, are we going to be looking at a rewrite of the zoning regulation? I think that is in the cards. That's in the cards. Yeah. Because from my point of view, it is. I, I, I did peruse, my son lives in Essex, Connecticut, and I perused their zoning regulation, and they've got a whole bunch of districts because it was such an old town. Mm -hmm. And, and one of the districts, the old village town, you know, they, they got, what they did is they wrote the zoning regulation to match what the district actually looked like. So you didn't constantly have to change or get special exceptions in that part of town. Yeah. They even had some, some where you, you, you had five feet uh, separation, you know, but that's what mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they just, they, they created all these little districts. I, yeah. I got a copy of it. If you want to, I, I'm pretty sure that um, making our zoning regs conform to what's actually on the ground is one of the recommendations that Brandy has come up with. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that's in the land use section, but okay. don't quote me on it. And there's, you know. From my point of view, we've amended, we've amended, we've amended ever since we've had zoning. Right. And it's time to just take a fresh look. Um, I'm hoping we can bring Brandy or someone else who is a professional planner on board to help us with that task or even do most of the legwork. Brandy recently committed, completed a review of the city of Lebanon zoning. Okay. And, you know, from my point of view, I think she's qualified professionally to do it. And the fact that she has been involved in our master plan effort gives her a couple of bonus points above anybody mm -hmm. else who would have to come in and learn the plan and figure Another. out what the town wants. Another interesting little factoid is, as we found out, that there's grant money in New Hampshire available for towns that want to uh, refresh zoning, particularly with regard to housing. And I know that some of that has come up in our discussions. Mm -hmm. So we may be able to get some financial support for that yeah. to actually do some. Well, you know, I showed you, I, I sent you that picture of that of that housing development in, in my old hometown. Yeah. Where it's just a row of houses. All, all interconnected, and, but it looks beautiful. Yep. You know, you got a garage, and you got a, a, a house, mm -hmm. and then you got a garage, and then you got a house, and they're all interconnected, yep. and they look great. Yep. You know, and it, <clears throat> why do we need a half acre? You know, and these specific, specific built for people that wanted to downsize. You know? Yeah, um, and, and they're all handicap accessible. You, know, you can roll in in your wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. 
those are the kind of things we got to be looking at in our next in our next zoning range. I mean, we, we we have the infrastructure in place in a lot of parts of the town. Uh, you weren't here Monday, but we talked about. Uh, can you put up the future land use again? This one? Yeah. So we talk, talked about come, come down here. So this is the Phil. That is the top. So Phil, we talked about filling the this entire area in as village for future village type development because there is water and sewer there already or at least sewer on a lot of it yep. and it's all fairly close to the quote center of town and walkable and you know i i think if we're gonna do that kind of development um for people who are downsizing that uh, that's one of the prime places in town where we could do it. Yeah. Or at least zone for it. Right. Yeah, it's all for it. So yeah. And you know, a developer can come in and doesn't have to fight tooth and nail exactly. to get something done. It's it's laid out for them. Yeah. You yeah. can build these houses on an eighth of an acre or yeah. whatever. Provided mm -hmm. they're all connected to the sewer and the water. Or you can have townhouses. Or right. Whatever whatever it happens to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh Definitely, you know, there's there's a lot in our zoning regs that's either outdated or makes it very difficult for people to get things done without jumping through a lot of hoops and a lot of expense. Yeah. And you know, my personal view is that you know, people as property owners, they should be able to do reasonable improvements on their land without jumping through a whole lot of hoops and if our zoning regulations don't reflect the way the town has been built up over the last couple of hundred years we ought to wake up and say this is what we have let's deal with it and uh, make our zoning regulations you, you can conform, make conform with, with what we got you can keep get what we got at a half acre on, on the water and sewer and have very expensive homes and no affordable homes or you can change the zoning regulations if you want affordable housing and you want young people to stay here sure you got to start thinking about some of that stuff mm -hmm. i also wish we had some younger people on these boards i really think we should recruit some some younger folks that's why i'm sorry we're losing air <laughs> He's not too young. Got it. This isn't brain yet. I don't know. I'm going to go. I'm going to go recruit some from, from, from the point of view of people, or my experience of people who serve on boards like this, um, it's usually people who are, you know, 50s and above. Yeah. I will say though that having the remote options does open it up for a lot of people. It yeah. does. As far as attendance, so somebody who maybe travels a bit for work. Now they can do it mm -hmm. for someone with uh, with kids, you know, with childcare commitments. Yeah. Now they can do it. Easier. Um, you know, and, and you don't have to attend every meeting to participate anymore. So I, I think there is a new opportunity. Yeah. With the remote attendance options. Well, I mean, Whitney's a perfect example of that. You know, we record the meetings, and she doesn't have to be here in person. She's had a new baby and has her hands full, and she can move in or go online rather, look at the video at her convenience, and turn out a set of minutes that are just as good as if she had been here. So that's one of the unintended blessings of COVID is that it's opened up town government to a whole lot more people. And I think it's good. Sure. Reminded me, um, any um, interest if uh, I look and do some research on updating the South Tower ordinance that we have? It has nothing to do with the master plan, so it can be a standalone option or go on the ballot next year. Uh, I think it's in zoning. 
It was written at least 15 years ago. It was at the time when cell towers were first appearing, uh, just in general, and it's very restricted by today's standards. Mm -hmm. So it needs a update to something more modern. Um, and I'm willing to just see what's out there. Other towns have that have been re redone in the last few years. Uh, and just see if the board's interested. I, I have no objection to that. I assume nobody on the board would, yeah. would object. Um, <clears throat> just with, with the caveat that, you know, we're not going to take, I, I don't think we're going to take it up as a standalone. I think it would be included in the rewrite. And it would just be, you know, one section among among many that we ask the town to vote on. When we, you know, when we I, mean, it, I mean, it, it could be a standalone because it's not related to. Really, it's a appendix to the zoning currently. Um, well, it's an appendix because when zoning started. No, no, no so I think it's a, a separate chapter. Right? It's like a standalone chapter. It's uh, well, for, it, so I mean, sort of, sort of it is, but it's I mean, it's it's like the sign ordinance. It's a section that, um, yeah. you know. Well, anyway, I'm just. But yeah, go ahead. I mean, but if it's because it doesn't, I'm just thinking if rewriting the regulate after the master plan is adopted, then you start sitting down rewriting regulations to match the master plan, that could be two years to three years before it goes to town meeting. I don't know that it will be that long. I mean, if we do it ourselves, yeah, it probably will. But, <laughs> you know, if, if, if we can hire it out to uh, somebody who does this for a living, um, I think it's certainly a process that could happen within six to 12 months. So it would still be two town meetings away because as the plan won't get adopted until September. Um, that gives you. Uh, nine, yeah, you're right. Three, two. Six months to have something for a plan. And that's not going to happen. No, that's not going to happen. So at least two at, town meetings. Yeah, you're before, looking at 18 yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, granted that we're not seeing a lot of cell tower activity, but. Um, the last one was like wave, wave, wave because the regulations were one that's going up on Moose Mountain. I don't know if they ever stopped that thing. No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, when he started construction. It was exactly one year ago that we approved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they they said it was probably going to be a couple of years before they got all of their federal oh. approvals. Okay. But yeah. Like I said, I'll just <clears throat> see what else is out there. I think that would be a good thing. Uh, certainly, you know. <laughs> Save, save a lot of work on the part of whoever helps us, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's yeah. town dollars. Yeah, I'm just going to, like I said, just adopt sure. somebody else's regulations that make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know if you were on the board when that was adopted. Yeah. But basically, my understanding is that the state came out with some model zoning regulations. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's what we wound up adopting was a model regulation. Yeah. Because there was a need to regulate or not regulate uh, cell phone towers or regulate them in a certain way that uh, was compatible with FCC regs, basically. Well, it was that, and there was. And because it was so new, a lot of people were saying, we don't want this in my backyard. Yeah. I don't want to look at it. And now everybody's like, wants it the because they don't have service. Mm -hmm. Sort of like solar panels. Yep. <laughs> Kill the turtles. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Anything else? Somebody want to make a motion? I move we adjourn. We'll second. Motion made and seconded. In favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned at oh, 7.48, oh. give or take. That's probably the easiest meeting you'll sit down. <laughs>